compound effects are a really important thing to get your head around if you're working in After Effects. Now, a compound effect is an effect that refers to or takes values from another layer in your comp. And in this video, we'll have a look at how we can use a black and white mat to control areas of the image and assign blur values to only a specified area of the image. A really useful technique to learn. If you want to follow along, you can open up the Effects AEP, which is in the Effects folder, and open up 04 Compound Effects. And here we have this little scene where we have a shift of focus created on this scene. Basically, we have the lens blur effect applied to the foreground and the background, and it creates this nice shift of focus effect. Now, that normally doesn't have any blur on it, the background or the foreground. You'll see that that's just applied using the camera lens blur effect, which is pretty amazing. It allows you to create a blur and you can assign iris properties to the blur. So if you have a look at this point here, you can see we're getting this really nice bokeh effect, which mimics a real camera. So where the light creates this kind of hexagonal shape, which is known as bokeh. Now, if you click on the shy button, there are another couple of layers in here and we can just switch the camera blur effect on and off for that foreground layer so you can see how the camera lens blur affects it. Once you've had a look at that, just close up those layers again because we don't really need to worry about them at the moment. What we're going to have a look at is a mat. Now, here we've got a mat and it's called blur map. Sometimes map and mat are used interchangeably. Some effects refer to a control layer as a map. Some of them refer to it as a mat. OK, so what I want you to do is double click that to open it. And this mat is used to determine whether or not the blur is applied to the hand. And any areas that are black will stop the blur working. Any areas that are white will allow the blur to work. When we look at our camera lens blur effect and open it up, you'll notice that I've selected the blur map as a controlling layer for the hand. And it stops the hand from going out of focus. If I switch that off, you'll notice the hand is also blurred. And that blur map is created using a mask. You can mask an area and create a black kind of hand solid by masking. And if we have a look at that, that's using the tint effect to tint the footage and then a choker and a Gaussian blur on the original footage just to create that black effect. If I turn those off, you'll see we actually see the hand. So it's been tinted down to black. You could also use the fill effect to do that. But what we're going to do is we're going to work on the foreground footage. So what I want you to do is click on the shy button and we'll release the foreground piece of footage from being shy by clicking on that button and we'll switch the other two to being shy and then click back on the shy button so we only have the foreground footage showing. Now I'm also going to solo it and you'll notice that we also have some transparent pixels down here. So let's move through until we see the ball being blurred and that lovely bokeh effect. Now at this point what I want to do is I want to make sure that we still have the bokeh effect on these particles but the actual ball itself is in focus. So what we're going to do is create our own mat or map to control the blur. So to do that, create a new solid. So go to Layer, New Solid. We'll call this Ball of Light Map. Make sure it's the comp size and click OK. Now, what we're going to do to create our mat is use a ramp effect. And the ramp effect is now 32-bit. So we get really nice high quality ramps from using this. And it creates a gradient for us, also known as a ramp. Before it was 32-bit, used to get stair-stepping problems, but not anymore now, it's 32-bit. So we're going to click on the Start of Ramp button and just move that down here, choosing a radial ramp from the Ramp Shape menu as well. So we're placing our ramp down here. You can also adjust the white value if you click on the white button here for the end ramp colour and move that, you'll notice you can determine where the ramp starts and ends. So we've created our ramp. We now want to get our shot controlled by that ramp. Now, if I switch off that layer so we can't see it and I select this layer and I try and choose that as my ramp. So we've got the ball of light map. Notice it affects everything. And that's because 
What happens when you add a ramp to a layer and you refer to it with a compound effect? The compound effect looks at the layer without the effect applied. So basically it's just using that. It's using an orange solid layer. In order for it to see the effect rendered on the layer, what we need to do is pre-compose it. So we're going to go to Layer, Pre-Compose, OK? And basically what that's going to do is it's going to place that into a separate composition and nest it within our comp. Now we're going to say Move All Attributes into the New Composition. And what that does is places the effect into the new composition so that in this composition, it sees the rendered effect. We're going to call it Ball of Light Map Comp 1. That's fine. And just click on OK. So you see that our layer is now replaced by a rendered version of that effect. And now if I switch off that layer and go into my effect and choose the Ball of Light Map Comp, you'll notice that if I switch that off and on again, that now it's actually controlling the blur. We can see that the ball is in focus, but the sparkles of light are slightly out of focus. Now, it's not quite in the right place, so how do we make sure it's in exactly the right place? Well, this is where we can take advantage of the new ETLAT system, E-T-L-A-T, -E which stands for Edit This, Look at That. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up this composition and we're going to lock it. And then we're going to say create a new viewer. So we've got two viewers open, OK? But in this composition, what we're going to do is view our compound effects comp. And we're going to lock that. So we've got two comps side by side. Now, the great thing about this is I can go into my blur map comp. Oops, the wrong one. The ball of light map comp. And open up my ramp settings. And I can select the ramp and just go in there and edit it. And I can see it update here. Now, it's, I've got quite a small screen to work with, so I'm just going to zoom in on this a little bit so we can see a little bit more clearly what's happening. Notice that as I move that around, the blur is updating. So I can make sure that I get it exactly where I want it. And I can adjust the white setting so that we have the centre of the ball in focus. But there's still these lovely bokeh effects out here. So really good way of being able to control the amount of blur. Now we would then probably animate that and to animate that we would track the ball, see where it moves around the screen and apply the tracking data to this value, the start of ramp value. And once you learn about tracking, you'll learn how you can attach data from tracking data to effect data. And that's how you would get it following the ball. But that's how you create the actual mat itself. And if we go back to our compound effects comp and view all layers now, you'll see the ball and the hand are in focus. But these lovely sparkles that come off the ball are lovely and out of focus. So that's how you can use one effect to control another effect.